Hey everybody, Ron Roy here, and today I want to talk about my Dark Pact Pathfinder build. It's been a pretty prominent bit of the Affliction, I played it a lot and I really like it. I think Dark Pact Pathfinder scales perfectly, it can fight against different kind of mechanics and can pretty much deal with almost everything in the game. As you can see on the screen right now, it's now still capable of tier 17 map, and the build itself was pretty much killed with one change. GGG pretty much removed Crimson Power node from Warlock Ascendancy together with Warlock Affliction Ascendancy. So right now, we have it back, and the build is back as well. The new body armor, called the Apostate Cabalist Regalia, is in the game right now, and it provides the same bonus that Crimson Power provided before. Gain maximum life instead of maximum energy shot from equipped armor items. So, well, I went to standard and I tested the whole build with new Apostate Cabalist Regalia. First off, I tested a lot of tier 17 gameplays that you've been seeing on the screen. Well, the build is currently working pretty good. As you can see, it can clear tier 17 with some issues, I would say. It can kill tier 17 boss. And it can be pretty much a really strong option right now. I still think the Dark Pact and Pathfinder stack just perfectly together. And the whole mechanics from my previous build is pretty much working. The only big update is the Apostate Cabalist Regale. So all the gameplay in that video was filmed at the standard after the patch with Apostate and with Apostate itself. If you're interested in the build, I'm going to leave the link to the build video in both the first comment and in the description. Feel free to check it out. So let's go further and see what has changed in the path of building and what changes needed to be done to the build for it to scale better for the Necropolis League and moving forward. So first and the most important part. While Crimson Power nodes were still in the game, my Dark Pact had about 221 million of combined DPS, as you can see on the screen right now. Let's go further and just remove the Crimson Power. It will pretty much ruin the DPS like by half, and we will have 100 million 17, which is pretty much alright, but not that strong as we had it before. So let's use the proper upper state instead, and look, we have 200. 40 millions. So we lost a really small amount that's been just like 10 million DPS difference. And with all of that, it's pretty simple to get a really good upper state. For a proper endgame version, I would recommend double corrupted upper state with socketed AoE gems and socketed minion gems. Socketed minion gems is pretty much the buff that usually considered bad. Nobody wants that. I mean, why you would even want that? But, since our Dark Pact is pretty much a minion skill gem, we can benefit heavily from two levels of socketed minion skill gems. And perfectly, we just need to use double corrupted upper state there with AoE and minion skill gems. I think it will be much more accessible than a lot of people think, and if you drop AoE and just will look like plus two level for socketed minion gems, it will be much easier to get. So, on top of that, almost everything else stays the same, because build is just working that way. We will still have Blightwell, we can still use Adorn, because Adorn is not nerfed for some reason. It's still working in the same fashion. Nothing has changed for the build in that regard. The biggest change is pretty much using upper state in almost all cases. While moving forward, going forward for the corrupted upper state and stuff like that. So the biggest change for the build has pretty much happened in the basic version. We can't use the body armor for energy shield anymore because you will not have the upper state that early. It's an uber drop, and if you're doing the basic version, you will need to stack armor and evasion items and just taking the life of them. So I generally recommend to go for something like STR, life, some resistances, and craft with 8% increased maximum life. It should work just fine for you, it goes the same way for the boots, you can keep the gloves for energy shield ones, because that way you will have a spell damage, 
um, it should help you a lot. Everything else is pretty much stays the same. As a helmet, I can also recommend Vol's Vision. Because, well, it's pretty simple, it will give you some armor, it will give you some chaos resistance. And on top of that, it will help you with life regeneration, even if you still have the recharge. And it provides 12% increased maximum life if no equipped items are corrupted. It's a pretty nice bonus, and you can utilize it for basic version, because Wall's Vision is much more accessible early than the upper state, which is pretty much an uber drop. On top of that, every other version like medium budget, high budget, and final version are pretty much calculated with the upper state in mind. For medium bu uh, budget, I recommend to just use the upper state itself. And for high budget, I recommend to go with plus two level of socketed minion gems corrupted one, because I think those versions are not really going to be too expensive. It considered a failed corruption because almost nobody needs to level socketed minion gems on upper state and that way I think it will be kind of accessible. If on the market you will be unable to find anything like that and I think the item is too expensive to corrupt it yourself, well you can just use a normal one. You will lose about 6 to maybe 7% of DPS which is not critical. So after all the changes, Please keep in mind that for that path of building, you will need to change concentrated and awaken increase area of effect based on what kind of setup you run. So if you are running maps, you need to take awaken increase area of effect instead of concentrated, and concentrated is here for bosses. Looking at the damage, we basically lost about 30 millions of DPS. That's considerable, but I don't think it ruins the build or girls too much. As you can see, the build is still perfectly capable at least in the end game version and I can even clear tier 17 map with it as I already showcased in that video. So generally I think the Dark Pact Pathfinder is still pretty viable after that. Losing DPS from like 20 to 25% based on the setup and on the approach. So right now Dark Pact is perfectly capable of doing almost all kind of content as I already showcased even in that state with upper state. We definitely lost some percentage of damage as I already mentioned, but right now it's still playable, it's still capable, and it's a still pretty nice build. The only thing that I recommend for all of you, please look into the Jewel before you are going to play that, because Jewel is kind of special, you will need to disengage, at least at times, and you need to be sure that such game style is pretty much working for you, because some people could love it and some other people could hate it. Overall, for myself, it's been a pretty fun build, maybe I will come back for it later. However, right now it's updated from Necropolis and onward. I hope it's going to stay in the game in some kind of way, and I will probably try to update it constantly as well. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the more building videos.